So my name is Samantha Finch. Um, I was diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma um, just over a year ago. Um, I am just from a small town. I just got a dog. So <laughs> it's been super fun. And I'm back to college now, studying social work. So back in November of 2021, I started getting a chest pain. And I really thought it was my heart because it was on my left side. And every time I took a deep breath, I felt it. Um, so right after I felt it, I went in and they did like a few heart tests and told me that like everything looks pretty normal. They did like echoes, EKGs and um, x-rays. And so they sent me home. And then a couple weeks later, it was still happening. So I went in again and they thought that I had pulled something in my chest or said it was anxiety, like said it was nothing again. They did a few more tests. Um, and then from then on, it was like every couple weeks, like a new symptom started to, de to develop. So um, the next was back pain. And that's when they sent me to the chiropractor and thought that I had scoliosis. Um, from there, I started like developing a bump on my neck. Um, and it was, I was having a hard time swallowing my food. And so I go in again and they say, it's probably just an infection. Um, they don't think it's anything. And they kept sending me home with like steroids or something to ease the pain then. But like, it wasn't long-term. It'd make me feel good for like a couple days and then something else would happen. Um, so it wasn't until like the end of May, I woke up and my face was super swollen and like puffy. I could barely open my eyes. And so I had went to urgent care again. They tested me for mono and strep and said that I was negative and that it's probably nothing. Sent me home with steroids again. <laughs> and, um, throughout this time, I'm having like extreme night sweats, fatigue, like sleeping all of the time. Um, and then my stomach started to hurt. I started like vomiting. Uh, so I went to the ER and um, they finally started like looking at me a little bit more seriously, but they still were kind of looking at me like you're 21 years old, like you have not, you don't have any health history. Like we really don't think that it's anything, um, but we can do tests if it make you feel better. So honestly, like it was just for me advocating for myself and my parents advocating for me that I was able to get a diagnosis. I felt like every time I went back, like I'm just saying the same things over and over and over again. Like every time I would tell them every symptom from November that I had had, like, and it just was something new, like every couple of weeks, like it started with the chest pain and then the back pain and then the lump and then vomiting and getting sick and just being so tired and like super intense night sweats, like really bad. Um, and then they would just say, oh, you probably just had a fever, like you broke your fever, but it wasn't, it wasn't like that. It was like really, really intense night sweats. So it was super frustrating. I'm super thankful that like I had my parents advocating for me too, because I was starting to like doubt myself and I knew deep down like something something's definitely wrong but when you're constantly being told like you're fine like nothing's wrong with you you kind of would start to believe it from being like in the hospitals and stuff and going to see my primary doctor nobody had said one thing about cancer they were that was never brought up at all but I diagnosed myself before any medical professional diagnosed me so I was like saying, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have lymphoma. Like I had every single symptom. Um, so I had that ultrasound on my neck and that didn't look good. So two days later I had my, um, CT scan and within like a half hour of the scan, they called me and were like, we think you have lymphoma. Like you need to go to the hospital. And that was the first time I had ever like I, in the back of my head, I knew something was off. Like I knew it wasn't going to be good, but I wouldn't, I obviously wouldn't think that I actually had it. It was a lot. It happened very quickly and it changed very quickly. You know, I think that's a lot of people 
um, might have tests for like a couple weeks at a time, like thinking that they have cancer. But for me, it was like, no one had, no one expected me to have cancer. Like my life changed very, very quickly. Um, and it was very scary. <laughs> Once I got like to the hospital, I was admitted obviously into the ER and then they sent me up onto the oncology floor. Still at that point, nobody had answers for me. Nobody really knew what was going on and I was there the next 11 days. We had to wait a couple days too because of the biopsy. So lymphoma staging is a little bit different and they explained this to me right when they told me my stage just because I was stage four. But he, ex my oncologist explained to me like, that doesn't mean what it means for other cancers. So um, mine was on the lining of my lungs, which made it stage four, but I didn't have it in any of my organs. When I had first got diagnosed and I'm sitting in the hospital, I had a ton of like people come in and talk to me, like just social workers and a lot of, you know, different groups and support systems and stuff. But yeah, one of the teams that came in was a fertility team. And I had these like four ladies come in and talk to me. And at first I was like, like, I, that wasn't even something that had crossed my mind. Like I was not even thinking of that. And so I, they gave me like a little pamphlet of like options that I could do. Um, unfortunately, I only could pick one of the options because I needed to start chemo right away rather than some women can, you know, freeze their eggs or do something like that. They have time to, but I was diagnosed and instantly had to start treatment. So, um, I got a shot once a month that shut down my, all my ovaries and like here in, in the moment when they were explaining that to me, like I instantly started bawling. And I remember specifically my oncologist said to me, like, Samantha, like, this is scary, but it's a good thing. Like, we're talking about you being able to have kids one day. Like, it's, think of it like that way. Like, it's good. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, I, I'm going to be okay. And I'll be able to have my own babies one day. But that wasn't something that I had thought about. And I think that is something that that's a big part of, you know, who we are too. So it's like, that was super scary. But basically, they had a set plan of what we were going to do. And the second I got my official diagnosis, we started treatment right away. And honestly, like starting treatment, like within the first hour of treatment of chemo, like my bump was completely gone on my neck and I instantly was starting to feel better. It was crazy how fast that happened. Um, I did the R epoch regimen. So it was five days of chemo, five days straight. And I would go in on Wednesdays um to get my bag changed so I could take my chemo home with me which was super nice um but it just wiped me out completely I did six rounds of that our epoch chemotherapy and then I did two rounds of methotrexate so the first round of chemo that I had I got really really they discharged me from the hospital like I was doing good at that time but the next day I got super super sick I was super dehydrated could not stop vomiting. And I, at this point, they didn't send me home with any like nausea meds or anything. So I, we didn't know what to do. Like I couldn't keep any of my meds down. So the next day I was home from the hospital, I went back to where I get treatment at, um, where I get chemo at and they um, like pumped me with fluids and stuff. But other than that, I handled the treatment very well, but it just made me super tired. I would sleep for like three days straight and I was just exhausted. But other than that, honestly, I instantly started feeling better because I didn't realize how sick I had been the whole year prior. So I finally, my body was like finally being treated for what it needed to be for so long. One of the hardest side effects that I had was losing my hair. I didn't, that wasn't even something that had crossed my mind when I was sitting in the hospital, like, because I had so much to think about and losing my hair wasn't on my priority list but when I finally asked my doctor like am I gonna lose my hair because I know everybody doesn't lose their hair and she was like yeah you're gonna lose your hair and that like I was in denial like I did not I thought that that was like the biggest deal of my life at the moment and now looking back it was such a small part but it to me it was so big like it was really really traumatic to lose my hair um but I eventually reached that point, just like I think everybody does. Like, 
it's just time to shave your head because I was like completely balding on my head. So I, I waited kind of a long time, but it started falling out about like a week after my first treatment. So I chopped my hair pretty short so it wouldn't be as dramatic. Me and my sister shaved my head and it was fun. We didn't make it like a sad thing. Like we made it the best that we could. And honestly, past that, like I haven't even really, I haven't been sad about my hair at all. It's just been, it is what it is. And looking back at it, I'm like, it was so silly for me to be so like devastated by it because I'm so obviously lucky to still be here and have, you know, this life. So it's like something like losing your hair in the big picture does not matter. Well, something else that I would like to go back on about the hair loss thing is shave your head when you're ready. Don't, don't do it just because you know you, I mean, I guess if, if you're good with it and you want to, you're ready to shave your head, then do that. But for me, it was like, I had to do it when I was ready. Um, and I think that was like, helped me like get closure on it. Like I knew it was time and you will get to that point where it's like, you know, that you need to shave your head, um, versus in the beginning when I had still had my hair and I, it wasn't falling out yet. Don't shave your head. Like just wait and get a short haircut. And then it's not as drastic as a change for you. I think that helped me a lot. So like halfway through my treatment, when I got that scan and it showed like you could totally tell by the scan that it was so much better than what it was. It gave me so much like hope and motivation. Like this is working. This is doing what it needs to be doing. And it gave me just more motivation to keep going. I got the last scan, like after I had finished all my treatment and it looked way better than what it did, but it still wasn't great, but they didn't want to like do any further treatment. So they were like, we'll just scan again. in I think it was three months. And, um, so that was February. I got another scan and that's when it showed that my cancer was back. So the same spot lit right back up. That was really, really hard. I, at that point, was signed up to go get a new job. Like I was planning on going back to college. I had so much stuff lined up that I was so ready for and just like excited to get like my life back. And so seeing that was just as bad as the first time, honestly. And I, the first time around getting diagnosed, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like I can do this. I'm so strong. But the second time it was like, oh, I have to do this again. Like that was my mindset. Like I was not ready to go through that again. We were going to do the CAR-T therapy, which is an immunotherapy, which basically is like, it uses your, it uses specially altered T cells, which are part of your immune system to fight the cancer. So um, they explained the whole process and how They'd take my T cells out, send them to California. They'd like genetically modify them, send them back to me. And the process, they started it right away. Um, And then they also started at the same time, um, like the stem cell transplant process, just in case it had to come to that. So um, they started just doing a bunch of blood tests and getting stuff ready just in case this CAR T therapy didn't work. Um, at first it sounded super overwhelming and it was like, I had went from finally getting a break from being in the doctor's office and like getting my blood drawn to right back to where I was in back in June, like had to go get my blood drawn every week when they started my, um, CAR T therapy. And I was there for two weeks taking my cells out. And then I just sat in the hospital for two weeks just to, and they just monitored me very, very closely. Everybody that I had talked to, like in the medical field, if they'd asked me like what my plan was and I'd say CAR-T therapy, they were all so impressed with this new treatment. Um, A lot of my oncologists explained it like, this is going to be the new chemo that people use because it's very effective and it's way easier on people's bodies than chemo. Um, It's just still kind of new. So there's not a ton of like data on that, but instantly I'm like going on Google and Googling, like what is CAR-T therapy? And you know, it's just like, it's crazy stuff. Like 
the machine that they hooked me up to and everything. And they had to put like a line in my neck to get my cells out. It really is amazing. Like what technology has come to and what it's continuing to do. So the whole, like going through CAR T therapy was honestly pretty like easy. I don't want to use the word easy, but it was very like, wasn't a ton happening. The only thing that like really sucked was you don't know, you have to give CAR T therapy time for the cells to do what they're supposed to be doing. So um, it was a lot, it was a big waiting game to see if this transplant had even worked. Um, And that was definitely the hardest part. Like I just wanted to know, like the two weeks that I was in the hospital, like they sell, they tell you that if you develop symptoms, it's a good thing because it means that it's doing something and it's working. But I really wasn't getting many symptoms, which obviously freaked me out. I'm like, what if this isn't working? Um, so the waiting game was super hard. Um, but I got a scan three months or a couple months after it. And it had showed good progress, but I still didn't hear the words remission until July 20th, this last July. So in July, I was told I was in remission. I get scans every four months. I had the PET scan in July, but now we're doing just CT scans for now on. And um, it's basically just like checking in with my doctor every like few months to see how I'm feeling. They won't order any more scans unless I give them a reason to and unless, you know, I don't, I'm not feeling good. But my oncologist always warns me, like, you know your body the best. So if you don't feel good or you feel like something's off, like, please tell me. Um, so that's, like, super important to remember. But also, like, it's just, like, I still don't even feel like this whole last year and a half was real. Like, I don't even feel like this happened. And being told I'm in remission still is like so new to me and I it feels just really weird but obviously I'm so thankful and grateful but it's just a lot to process I had a great support system with my friends and family um but I would highly recommend like finding a community online like through social media I've met a lot of great girls my age that are going through what I've gone through and I feel like that just gave me like it was almost refreshing to you know, here people are going through what you're going through because I have my friends and family here, but you don't, you can't like sympathize or you don't know exactly what you're going through unless they've gone through it themselves. It was super hard. Like when I, cause I got diagnosed last June and all my friends are, you know, starting to go back to college and I had just turned 21. So my friends are turning 21 and it was really hard. Like my friends are going out, going to college, graduating college, and I'm sitting there hooked up to chemotherapy. Like, it sucked. All my life, I had never really needed to go to the doctors. Like, I had gone for maybe a yearly checkup, but I had always been so healthy, so I never really realized, like, how big of an advocate you have to be for yourself. I feel like I trust myself more than I did before. I listen to my body more, and I just stick up for what I, how I feel. Stay strong and just fight as hard as you can because it's so, so worth it. Find a good support system and surround yourself with people who just make you feel really good. Be your own advocate. Like, you know your body better than anyone else. And if you think something is wrong with you, it probably is. So just trust, trust it, trust yourself. 